Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Today is Friday, August 4th. Before we jump into the alerts, just wanted to make you aware of something that we are starting to roll out. If you go to your, if you're in your members area here, uh, or it's on the front page of our, our website as well, if you scroll down, but in the VIP premium upgrades, one thing we just added was this option strategy back tester. So I'll be talking more about this, but if you want to check it out and kind of get an idea of, of what it is and how it works, it is, uh, it's going to be a game changer for a lot of reasons where you're able to back test different strategies. So if you wanted to back test iron condors in Facebook or iron condors in Apple or put credit spreads in Google, you know, you can, you can basically back test anything that you can think of, any strategy, and it, it's done all within seconds on this option strategy back tester. So if you're interested, check that out. Uh, I'll be doing more videos and talking about that in the coming weeks, but let's, uh, let's jump into the alerts and go over what we did this week. So starting with Monday, our first trade, was, uh, was an opening trade that we did in Amazon. So we, we sold an iron condor in Amazon. If we go to the platform and take a look, uh, Amazon announced earnings uh, on, on 727. So one of the things that we've really been testing, and part of this goes back to the options back tester with the, with the help that it's providing is looking at, at entering premium selling strategies right after the earnings are announced. Okay, so we wait for the stock to do its little big move, its gymnastics, flip, dip, skip around. And then a lot of times what happens is the stock kind of settles into a range. Now we do get the implied volatility crush after earnings, but based on just the fact that a implied volatility at that point then just kind of stays low and you typically don't get a big spike uh, and the stock stays in a specific range, bodes well for premium selling strategies. So we're going to be doing more about that. I, I did send out this the alert, alert uh, for, for that type of strategy, but in this case, implied volatility was over 50 as well. So we're getting some really rich premium in those options, good time to sell, so it made sense. But in times, even when volatility gets crushed really low, we will be looking to put on some of these post earnings uh, premium selling strategies. So post earnings, iron condors, strangles, butterflies, and I'm going to be doing more, more videos and we're actually coming out with a course all around earnings announcements with stocks. Uh, it's, I don't know, I, I almost, I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to preface it too big, but I want to tell you, I think it's going to be our best course yet. So look for that in the next few weeks, but that's what this was all around was a post earnings iron condor and Amazon. Uh, still very centered here, nothing to do. Need a little bit move up and a little bit more contraction or time to pass, and contraction in IV or time to pass, and, uh, and we'll look to get out of that one. Next trade we made was a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So we closed out the call side. So the grains continue to move down, so it breached our downside break even. So we closed out the call side and then simultaneously entered a new iron condor out in the October cycle. So now we've got the put side of, of our iron condor in September in wheat, and we've got a full iron condor in October. So let's go to the platform and take a look at wheat. So here's our September one. It just continues to move down. But remember, all we need here is a move back up to about 475. 480 and we'll get out of this and end up having a profit on that trade. So we've still got a decent amount of time left, still got 21 days to expiration. I think the tendency, especially for newer traders, is to panic when it breaches like this and, and, and you know want to get out and, and you end up taking the loss. But a lot of times it comes back into our range and we can get out for a profit in the overall trade. And then the other reason that we, and then the other thing that we do is we add another iron condor. So we're collecting more credit. We're widening our break evens. This one's out in October. So we're extending our duration. We're giving ourselves more time to be right. So be patient. Let these probabilities play out. If, 
if wheat does continue to move lower, we'll make the necessary adjustments and continue to work our way through that trade. But you got to stay mechanical, stick with the program. It works. Uh, next trade was a opening trade in XLK. So IV spiked up in XLK and we put on a short straddle. So you can see we're very, still very centered here. Got a little bit of profit, not enough to take off yet. Uh, if we look at the chart of XLK, and that's basically the technology um, ETF, you can see implied volatility is starting to come down now uh, from where we got in. So we got in at a good point. And so now we just need a little bit more time to pass and uh, for XLK to stay a little bit range bound for, uh, for a little while. Next trade was very similar to wheat, basically the same thing. Soybeans, it was coming down, so it uh, breached our downside break even. So we took off the untested side, we took off the call side, and then we simultaneously entered a new full iron condor in soybeans to collect more credit. Again, going out to October, extending that duration. And so if we take a look at soybeans, kind of the same story as we saw in wheat, we've got price that moved down out of our uh, put side vertical here so we need to move up to benefit there and then we have the full iron condor that we put on to widen our break evens and extend that duration so we'll just be patient in that and see what happens next trade was a closing trade in RUT which is the Russell 2000 index booked a booked a nice profit in RUT and uh, you know, remember, calendar spreads, we put those on when implied volatility is low. And then when implied volatility spikes, that helps our position. So we put it down when implied volatility is up down here. Got a nice little move down and implied volatility popped up. And so we were able to get out of that for, for a nice profit. The other, the next trade, then another closing trade in QQQ. So we had a strangle on in the Qs. Uh, we're only in this trade for 12 days, booked a profit of over 35% of max profit. Now implied volatility in the Qs is, yeah, you still got the, well, it's not, it's not over 50, but it's, it's still around that level. So next week if we get a, if we get a little bit of a pop up in implied volatility which would mean a down move in the actual index uh, then we'll look to re-enter either either an iron condor or a strangle depending on the risk reward that we that we have at the time uh, we'll look to re-enter another trade there XOP, we had a closing trade. So this was a trade that we originally had a strangle on in. We had to make a couple adjustments and we got a nice move down, nice contraction in implied volatility and gave us a chance to get out of that really just for a small profit. After you make a couple adjustments, you're really just trying to kind of get back to break even or eke out a small profit. We made a little bit of a profit on that and got out of the trade. If we take a look at a chart of XOP, the implied volatility is still decent in there. Well, it was, it just, man, we got a little bit of a decent contraction here just in the last hour. Um, so, so we would need implied volatility to pop back up to, to re-enter a position in XOP. So we'll, we'll look for that as well. And lastly, we did an opening trade in corn. So these grains continue to have nice risk reward because of the high uh, pricing of the options. There's been a lot of vol volatility, which creates opportunity for us so this one is still very centered. We just put this one on today. And, uh, and so if we take a look at the graph, you can see it's still very centered, no profit or loss yet. So continue to wait on that. If we take a look at some of the other, well, actually, let me go back first. Um, let's go to the, the positions that we closed. So we had these three closing trades. Booked a profit in the rut for 195 bucks, in the queues for 159, and this was the XOP strangle that we had adjusted and just eked out a, a small profit and booked that. And we'll look to re redeploy or reposition in that if, if implied volatility pops back up. And then our current portfolio is always shown here as well. I like to just for this video, I'll just go to the, go to the platform to to go over these. So we have the we have the ES, which is the E-mini S&P futures. 
and we have a put spread in there. And really this is, this is there specifically for as a directional position to give us short delta in our portfolio. I know I harp on this all the time, but when you're selling premium, the way that you protect yourself is to keep on short delta. So if we have a sharp move down, we're gonna get some benefit from this. Now, as the market continues to grind higher, these short delta positions are gonna create a little bit of a drag on our performance, but you have to have it there for protection. So that's, that's what that's there for. I mentioned corn, mentioned soybeans, wheat, Amazon, DIA, kind of the same thing. We're holding this for that short delta that we have. Uh, this was actually, or this was originally part of an iron condor that moved up and we took off the, the untested side. And a lot of times we'll, we'll take off the whole thing, but in this case, we rolled just the call side to continue to keep that short delta in our portfolio. So we'll continue to hold that. And that's in the August cycle. So we still have 14 days left on that. We'll look to get out of that, uh, you know, in the last week before expiration. Facebook, we've got a we've got a position on in Facebook. So uh, they had announced their earnings back on uh, July 26th, and after the had a little bit of a jump up and then settled down, we put on a butterfly, looking for Facebook to still stay in a range and for that implied volatility to continue to contract. We uh, we look for about 20 to 25 percent of our debit paid on these. So. You can see here total risk or amount paid for this was $631. So we want at least 120 bucks of profit. We're at about $100 right now. So we'll continue to monitor that and, and wait for some more profit before we exit. FXE, this, is a, this was purely a directional play. The Euro has just been on an absolute tear to the upside. And just looking at that from, a, from an overbought situation, Looking for a short-term pullback. We got in uh, back about right here, uh, and then it continued to climb. We're starting to see that pullback now. If we can get a little bit of continuation more down to the downside, uh, that'll benefit this position. And we'll want to we'll want to book this profit when we get to between 25 and 50 percent of max profit on that trade. GLD Gold. We've got this double calendar still here, still within our range. The implied volatility in gold, had, you know, it, it, it went back down again today. We really need a pop in IV and in gold to kind of stay in this range right in here. And, uh, and we'll get out of that with a profit. The front month in that GLD has 14 days. So we'll be looking to exit this next week, uh, maybe early the next week at the latest. But, uh, but we're, we're continuing to wait for profits in that one. SPY, we had an iron condor in, and we took off the untested side when it breached here. Now we just need a little bit more of a down move in SPY to benefit that. XLK, I mentioned that, we have the straddle. And then lastly, XRT, which is the retail ETF. We've got a strangle on here. Implied volatility continues to stay high, which is a great vehicle to sell premium in. And, uh, We'll just wait, we're waiting for some theta to decay and some time to pass to, to book a profit in XRT. So that's all the trades for the week. Hope everybody has a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week.